My name is Brian, and welcome to part two of the Southeast Adventure series. Spent the week camping on Old North Carolina 105, and as I was going through doing the edits, I started picking out all the tips and tricks, so that's what this video is going to turn into. 20 camping tips for whenever you're in the great outdoors. And is it cold? What do you think, buddy? It got pretty cold last night, right? The worst I saw was 27. Stay warm in your wooby. Should we get up and start the day? Okay, easy buddy, easy. I am looking forward to staring at the view all day. This thing's not a heck of a lot of fun to roll up, being eight feet wide, but I'll take it. It can take the wind, because we were doing 20, 30 mile an hour wind gusts up here last night. Woke us up a couple times, but it held together like a champ. We need some coffee. And my buddies turned me on to uh, fresh ground coffee on our last trip out to Moab. Yeah, I'm spoiled now coffee grinder. Things are always better if you have to work for them, right? Oh, nothing like the smell of fresh ground coffee. And we needed something to do while we waited for the water to boil, because as you all know, if you watch water boil, it takes longer. All right, now it's time to get down to business. I'm not a barista, but I like to just wet the grounds and then I kind of press them into place. And I don't know, it kind of keeps it from floating around quite as much. This is where it's at. This is why I'm sick of sitting in my spare bedroom. Oh, and by the way, it's Monday. It's not eight o'clock yet, so I'm not working. Coffee first. Coming out here and camping is great, but it's a seven hour drive to get here. That makes for a very short weekend. So I'm gonna be spending most of the week here. <sighs> Perfect. So I wanted to give you a quick tour of camp. We got Zeus there, figuring out his leash. Got the kitchen set up, mostly for coffee, because I haven't done any cooking yet today. Ended up working all day. My new water jug, it is working like a champ. Got the lifesaver as backup and extra water. Then inside the house here, got the office set up. There's my bed in the background. Zeus's crash pad. Trying out a new mat system, which so far it's working great. There's my morning coffee spot. Might actually have a campfire today. But the biggest thing about this campsite, and the reason I'm here, even though it's so close to the road, is that view. You just can't beat that view. This is my happy place. Even though I've been working all day, this is the view out my front window. Can't beat it. Time for some fun. Good job, buddy. All right, bring it back. Whoa. All right. All right, drop it. This is really hard to do on film. Okay, you ready? All right, time to get to work. I'm not an expert at cooking, so if you're expecting a lot of commentary while I'm cooking, 
Nope, ain't gonna happen. I'm concentrating on the task at hand and my stomach is screaming at me. Today is a steak day. Prep work. The Montreal steak seasoning. A little olive oil to season the pan. It's not the cleanest option in the world, but as long as you can deal with a little bit of dirt. Not a bad trick. This thing is nowhere near level, but got a trick for that. All you gotta do, some rocks of varying sizes, do a quick level. Oh yeah, here we go. God, it already smells great. I always like to try and cook during the daylight whenever possible. That way I can get done, have my meal. Most important part, do dishes before the sun goes down. Because if you're up in the mountains, it gets frosty when that sun goes down. And doing them while it's still kind of warm outside just makes things so much nicer. Ideally, I would say make a big lunch and have a snack for dinner. I'll say it, that's a great idea. I never do it, never. But I always think, especially when I'm doing dishes at eight o'clock at night, that it would have been a great idea if just had a big lunch and eat a snack for dinner. I know it's Montreal steak seasoning, but it's pretty good on everything. I don't carry lids, but tin foil works pretty darn good. Here is another hidden secret. I love this stuff on steak. I can't tell you how good this smells. Oh man, I'm starving. So I get the potatoes most of the way cooked. I'll just finish them off real quick in the steak juice. Mm. A little bit of cumin. Now for a little secret ingredient. Grated Parmesan. Cook that up while the meat's resting. Look at that. Parmesan potatoes. Do some pre-work on dishes. Try and get as much of the fat out while the pan's still a little bit warm. Makes dishes go a little bit easier. Besides, there's clean and then there's camp clean. They're not exactly the same thing. Time for some dinner. I don't know what filmed and what didn't. Um, maybe I missed the big reveal, but man, I'm already part way in. Don't cheap out on your camp silverware. Having a solid knife and a fork makes a huge difference. Oh yeah, Parmesan crusted potatoes. Soaked up just a little bit of that steak, steak seasoning. Oh, good. Although I can probably eat anything about right now. I've had a grand total of two Pop-Tarts for the entire day. 
It was definitely a Monday at work. What do you think? Does he deserve another treat? Gentle. Very good. Better catch it. Good job, buddy. Good job. Not only is it a steak knife, it does pretty good at cutting bread. I'm always a big fan of cheapo utensils like these. this plate here. That's from Walmart. I don't even know if it cost a full dollar. I splurged and got the GSI silverware. Tell you what, this stuff is legit. I'll see y'all on the other side of this meal. Uh, time for dishes. Never been a huge fan of it. I also don't use the sink. Just pour a little water in one of your cook pots or whatever you're making. And then just use that. Also, if you got something that's got a good coating of fat on it, get some nice hot water on there. Oh, the exciting part. <clears throat> Everybody shows cooking. Nobody ever shows the dishes. Try and wipe as much of the soap out with paper towels as I can. I go through a lot of paper towels camping. I know, it's not the best for the environment. I always boil a little bit of extra water because you know what? Coffee is not for just first thing in the morning. Got the last little bits of sun. Just catching the top of the mountain. time for bed. I figured, what the heck, I'll show you my nightly routine for setting up my bed. Turning the office into a bedroom. I just put this little poncho liner down, affectionately known as the Whoopie, and it is going to be a cold one, so I'm going to go in super bundle mode. All right, so this is my brand new favorite thing. Uh, it's an Ignic electric blanket. I don't know if all electric blankets work the same, but man, this sucker kept me toasty last night. I've got a mummy bag, but what I do is put the blanket into the footwell of the mummy bag. That just kind of keeps me nice and toasty. If you have a regular sleeping bag, it probably makes things a little bit easier. I use my bag as a headrest, keep the pillow from sliding out on me, and that is pretty much it. Other than plugging the electric blanket in, start letting it get to work. So, hope you have a wonderful night. I'll see you in the morning. Nice and snug, curled up. Because if I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag in a zero degree bag, he should at least have a little blanket himself. Guess what? Sunrise. You know what that means? Coffee time. I never use scissors for cooking at home, but man, do they work good out camping. Oh, in the middle of cooking and somebody just ran over my solar panel. God, I hope it's still working. If it works, that solar panel's getting the best review ever. 
Never in a million years would I have thought that while I'm cooking up eggs, somebody's gonna come along and drive onto a solar panel that's laid out at my campsite. Well, at least he didn't pivot his wheel on it. But man, that hurts. Let's finish dinner. Then I'll check the solar performance. Oh, look at this. I am working, but man's got to eat. <laughs> all right, all right, gentle buddy, gentle. Yeah. I figured I would share with you how I rig the awning for heavy weather. One of the big things I do that I don't see done very often, tie what's called a barrel hitch around there, and then I tie that off to brace it. So if I get heavy winds that is pushing this in, that bar there has some extra support. I don't keep it super tight because I don't want to put undue pressure on it. I just keep it snugged up there so it provides a little bit of extra support. I also drop down the corner of the awning. That way the water's got a nice clear path to be able to flow right down there. And ideally, as the water comes down, I'll have that slope of ground right there facing away from me or facing downhill so the water's got a clear path to flow away from my awning. And of course, the typical awning tie downs go there. It's pretty dark in this awning and I don't feel like running my camp lights. So I did pop open the front, the front, uh, porch area. Just got that rigged out and I'm tied in to the exact same stake. Doesn't look quite as picturesque as you might normally be used to. Um, everything's kind of slanted off at an angle, but this is a great way to channel water. I don't really have any high-speed ponchos or anything like that. I actually carry an umbrella. I love it. Watershed on our porch is doing well. Pretty good stream of water coming down. Our angle's working good. Getting no pooling whatsoever. Well, it's time to give up this spot for somebody else. Gonna make a quick run into town, try and find my own next spot right before the sun goes down. I'll probably be setting up in the dark, but hey, that's the way it goes. Hopefully that adds some more light. Ooh, gotta get that farther away from the dog. That's for sure. Don't know how that's gonna show on camera, but it's sure doing the trick for me. Nothing special for camp today. I thought about going back for that same spot, but honestly, I just kind of want to share with people. That was a pretty awesome spot. Might be the best view on the whole 105. Not gonna get too fancy this time. I'm just gonna do it quick and dirty. All right, so. Note to self, I like the ARB zipper better. It's plastic, which I always thought was kind of hinky, but it did seem to go on better. Although I wasn't pulling this much canvas, so maybe that had something to do with it. Well, I was gonna break camp at daylight, be on the road by like 7.30. It is currently nine o'clock, but ah, oh well. I didn't feel like moving and getting around too early. Quick tip, toilet paper in a plastic bag protects it. Oh, that's gonna be a wrap for the camping tip portion, but stick around, let's go check out a waterfall. This table has taken a beating. Still going pretty strong though. 100% functional. It's not quite as pretty as it used to be. This bag's held up. Actually, this table is with me for me and my daughter's first trip. So this table is two years old. Going, it's on its third season now. I mean, it's probably seen 
six months of use at camp. The fact that it's holding together this well, I'm pretty impressed. That's perfect height for my front runner chairs. All right, get Zeus's leash done, throw him in the car, and away we go. Oh, well, well, it's gonna show, but we are right by Linville Falls. So we're gonna go check that out. Moving out. a trash receptacle. I think we may just take advantage of that one. Super cool little cabin. Heck yeah, it's closed right now. But the bathrooms are open. Overall, Route 105 is a hard packed dirt road. It has some running from you know, runoff and stuff like that, but nothing bad. Two-wheel drive is just fine here. Probably have some all-terrain tires. And the falls area is busy. It must be cool if parking's this bad. We get to get Zeus out of the car a little bit. Take a quick little hike to the falls. This is a nice little walk. I'm digging it. Thank you for sticking around till the end, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I'm not the only one with camping tips, so if you've got good camping tips that you've come up with, please leave them in the comments. I want to hear them. I'm always looking for new tips, tricks, and innovations. Keep an eye out for next episode, part three. We're going to head on out to the great state of Georgia, surrounding area, and do some more exploring. Till next time, enjoy the ride.